Hello everyone, my name is Mike, also known as Flyfisher530. I am heading up further into Northern California, above the Gila River, uh, into the Mendocino National Forest. Um, this is really just a one night trip. Uh, it's not so much an overlanding trip as it is meeting up with a good friend of mine to do a, um, a rig walk around of his new vehicle. And it is something to see. It is a brand new Ford Bronco Raptor. Um, that he has spent the past couple months uh, upgrading uh, to one heck of an overlanding style vehicle. Um, you really got to see this. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Stay tuned. Okay guys, well, um, as you know, I'm Mike, Flyfisher530, and I am with Barry Bonds, who I met a year and a half ago, I think now, almost two years, maybe. Yeah. And uh, we met under probably the fairly unusual circumstances, <laughs> wouldn't you say? Yeah. Definitely. And we got to go back a little bit and just talk for people who are just, who don't know the history. I met Daniel, 395 Junkie, uh, on a trip in Death Valley um, two or two and a half years ago now. Um, we decided to get together again on a 395 trip later on after we met and uh, uh, he tells me, you know, hey, do you know any spots up in uh, Nevada that we can go off the 395? And I said, yeah, I had an idea of a place on a stream. And <clears throat> he goes, great, I'm bringing a friend along. <laughs> and I had no idea it was going to be this guy. So, um, but that's where Barry and I met. And uh, ever since then, we've stayed in touch pretty Pretty a lot, I'd say. At least, at least three times a week. <laughs> at least three times a week. <laughs> we talk. On we the talk phone. a lot, and about yeah. not just uh, mostly overlanding. We yeah, got to be honest. For it's sure. Gear and uh, tents and vehicles and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, we've had a great friendship, and uh, very appreciate you um, yeah. doing this walk around video with me. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the Defender. What what happened with the Defender? Okay. <laughs> I love the Defender. Don't get me wrong. It, it, it's it's a great rig and it's it's very capable. Um, so I, I I did the Audi cab. I did the whole walk around with uh, Daniel um, in the Mojave Desert. I did that walk around. That's when I had the. It, I was still finishing at that time. Then when I got with you later on, all the other stuff came. I put the Audi cab and then the right. gear and everything in there. But um, it just 
wasn't what I wanted in a in a rig. Yeah. Um, what I loved about the Jeep and the Bronco is that a lot of it's plug and play, and a lot of it you can just disconnect, reconnect, add. There's a right. lot of options with those those rigs that the Defender just didn't have. Right. Um, I couldn't remove the seats, and I wanted to do the seat deletes there. Um, there's just a lot of electrical issues with that whole rig that yeah. I really just couldn't do what I wanted to do. Not saying it's not a bad, you know, it's a bad rig or anything. It's a great rig. Yeah. You know, but, you know, if you want to just keep the seats and do what you want to do, I wanted to have more of an overlanding rig. I wanted more with the storage things. I love the seat deletes that I saw in the Jeeps and the Broncos and stuff like right. that, the Toyotas and stuff. So. I always wanted to go down that road. So I sold it and I got a Bronco Raptor. Yeah, very cool. Took me yeah. about nine months to get this baby, but it. I yeah, started. I know. We were in constant communication about that and, uh, you know, getting rid of the Defender and the pros and cons of that. And it was just, a, it was, like you say, a very capable yeah, vehicle, very but capable. there just wasn't a lot of options to mm -hmm. add on to that. Winches or, you know, skid plates or whatever features you wanted, a goose gear system. It was just, it was comp it was complicated yes, so because there's just too many wiring complications to where you couldn't take this out because it messes up the screens or this or right it just you were just limited not saying that the car the, the rig wasn't great i mean it did everything i wanted to do and i was very right. very happy with it it just on the interior aspect of what i wanted to do and how i wanted to do my off-roading and my Right. I call myself weekend warriors. I'm not like overlanding for weeks and all this other stuff, right. but just my little weekend trips. I just, I love what Jeeps, Broncos, Toyotas, you know, what they yeah. offer yeah. And, and what they're, what, what they offer you. That makes sense. So, um, Barry has done an amazing job of this. So he got this in November, right? Oh, took delivery yeah, something I think. like that yeah October, and November, something so like that. he's the last just the last couple of months has done an amazing job of upgrades and we're going to show you guys that here we're going to start in the front and kind of work our way to the back but this is probably one of the nicest overland bronco raptors if not the nicest <laughs> that's out there right now um, amazing amount of modifications have been done to this rig to make it super capable for overlanding and um, where do you want to go with this barry well but first of all to just be transparent if you do want to do this at the speed I did it at, <laughs> is that I ordered the Bronco, I mean, eight, nine months, I mean, it's been forever on, on the order, and I ordered everything in advance. So I, I knew the mistakes that I made with the Defender, and I knew the things I wanted to do different. Yeah. And I ordered everything, and plus I had you, I had Daniel, and I had a whole bunch of, a lot of friends on YouTube. Um, give me a lot of advice and so i took a lot of their input and then i i i got everything in advance and yeah. so if you're really looking to 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 do it in a more of a rapid pace i advise everyone to pre-order everything because the supplies are very low it's hard to get yeah and i mean just anything takes forever yeah so if you have true. a plan do measurements in advance get with people that you you know that overland a lot or are, are outdoor off-roaders and take a lot of notes because that's what i did mm -hmm. um i'm not really trying to reinvent the wheel on this one 37s are great for me i'm not really a rock crawler guy mm -hmm. too much so i don't really have to worry about it what bronco did with this rig is just phenomenal but right just that is at advice if you really want to um do it in a rapid pace ordered in advance yeah that makes sense and uh yeah that's for sure and if you guys don't know this probably about barry but he is mr research so yeah. he will research everything and anything to the max and he really wants to get his hands on things as well he's not just going to order something over the internet without no. actually seeing it or knowing about what it is and that's why i like going to expo we've both yeah. been to expo together a couple times that's a phenomenal place to yeah. go see things and, and kind of actually see what you're getting and that's where actually where we saw the trail racks right yeah, trail racks, we yeah. saw the trail racks at the last expo in bend so all right well we're going to start the, with the, the front and work our way to the back sound good 100 yes, percent. and to everyone who's helped me from trail racks to roam to goose gears to you know red arc all of them thank you very very much i really do appreciate what you guys have done for me and all the help i mean they've been fantastic with keeping me informed on everything 
you know, you know, talk me through a lot of this. I'm I'm a newbie. Believe yeah. me by far. I know nothing about <laughs> this whole new world of experience I'm going into. So right. I really want to thank all everyone who's helped me build this and, yeah. and put this together. I know me. Rhino Adventure Gear also helped you. Rhino Adventure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A shade darker with the, the wrap. So I'll go on along with everybody that, that yeah. helped me. Okay. Next step, we'll start with the front. All right. So we are in the front of the vehicle now. And Barry, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we got up front here in terms of what you've added. Well, the only thing I've added in the front so far is just the Heretic lights. I want to thank Heretic and them for, for doing this with me. I met them also at the Overland Expo. Everyone I met at Overland Expo. So um, I did the, the front. front. I changed the, it's the Bronco um, Baja lights that it originally came with. I changed them to Heretic lights. Um, so Yeah, they integrate in. It. I, got the, the, I also got the side side lights here a pillar lights a pillars or whatever mm -hmm. you call them remember i don't remember all the names so right. forgive me and then i put the light bar on top and that's so much of what i've done with heretic yeah um so far my They'd... my next goal i love this bumper i do love the bronco steel bumper i am looking for anyone who's out there mm. that can get a wench put on here but i don't want these big long bumpers i want something integrated in yeah. a way where i can keep all the same functions with uh, the existing um bronco sensors and everything and so i want to keep everything um factory as well as just adding a wench and then just in incorporating my hair tape lights in there and also being able to see out of my front camera and so that one I'm going to have to wait for patiently, and, and that would be my final project in the front. Yeah, it makes sense. Set. Yeah, but they did a nice job, Heretic, I think, with their lights, the way they integrate in with both the amber, and then you have the other ones up top with the uh, trail racks. That's really cool, the way they yeah, integrate together. they did a good job because I got the flood lights there, and then I got ambers, amber here, and the same pattern from there to there. Yep. And then I just have the actual flood lights on the top. All right, light very bar. cool. Well, we'll uh, keep moving here. All right, so what's the deal with the tires and the, the rims? So what I did is um, I took the Goodyear KO2s off and I added the Nitto um, Recon Grapplers. Um, they're the same dimension. I think these are actually more of a true 37 than the uh, KO2s. They're a little more narrower. Right. Um, I saw Light Bright. Um, do theirs when they put the needles on and so I kind of copied that off a of light bright on YouTube um, also I did a full wrap from a company called a shade darker um, friends of mine I did the tent um, so I wrapped the entire um, Bronco wrapped her the whole thing um, even the fenders so I got the uh, self-healing wrap um, on there Nice. As we come here, I put the Rock Slide Engineers on. I just uh, ordered those um, through a company called 4x4. And, um, oh God, I can't even, Livermore, out in Livermore, I did mm -hmm. that. Um, so they, they installed those on there. As I have trail rack, um, rack on top. I have a gazelle tent up here with uh, Adventure Lab, which I think is a brilliant idea. Created a, a stand thing here where you can actually just take ratchets and wrap it through with a here. So your tent, I mean, it's not going anywhere if you want to do that. Yeah, it's solid. Um, Roto packs like everyone else, shoveled up here with a rhino lock so no one can actually steal it and <laughs> break my window. Yeah. Um, if you walk up here, I added, I ordered Rombox, which I think is a great and awesome idea. I also saw that from uh, Bronco Nation um, at the Overland Expo that they had it on their, their Bronco. So I, I did that, which is really good because it has its self-release. You just click the thing off, take your Rombox off and click it on and never comes off. Um, 
Other than that, I just have a shovel on the side. Um, and everything else is going to be on the inside. Yeah, you got the uh, water roto packs on the I side, do. a shovel there. Mm -hmm. And I love that uh, mounting system for the roam boxes, that, the way yeah, that mechanism. Yeah, their mounting system is phenomenal because you just take, you just unhook it from right here, and then you have the one in the front, and you just lift the box off, and it just goes right back in and locks down. And yeah, very you cool. You don't really have it's to very worry clean. about it so much. The seat delete. Let me go ahead and um, take a look here. Yeah, Goose Gear did a nice job. The way it comes out. So I I I, I have a Goose Gear Goose Gear table. Easy. You'd only need one hand, which I really like. You don't have to like have anything. My next thing is I'm gonna create a thing where I can put. <laughs> My napkins and my paper towels, and it just comes down here. I have a Dometic fridge, slides out. 45 liter Dometic fridge. Yeah, nice. I have Red Arc Management 30 system, which is right there. So I have USB. I also have a light on the inside, which would be inside my goose gear that lights up all my um, my inverter and everything for a red arc i also have here i have my usb usb c ports here i have 12 volt point here which also comes off the switches i also put 110 two of them instead of one mm -hmm. usb port here i'm running a thousand watt inverter with a hundred amp battle bore battery battle born battery my step 22 bags which I love. My buddy Adam kills it. I love him. He's my one of my closest friends. Um, so I have Step 22 here. Brian also at Goose Gears is a really close friend of mine, so it's really good. So the reason why I I went with this over the Defender because the options were immense, and and I'll tell you why. I have a Gazelle tent that I can ground tent with. If I ever wanted to add a rooftop tent or even a, you know, if I wanted to go with a eye camper or whatever, mini or whatever, I still have space to do that. I also now have a deep sleep that I put in here. And if I need to do a, just a simple overnight, I could pop a deep sleep here and I went here. That's why I didn't go with the two drawer system because I wanted different options in camping or overlanding or whatever anyone wants to call it. So I could go here, pop my deep sleep, pump it up, put it right there. Um, I don't really need much more than that, just one drawer stuff. I'm only gone for a couple of days. Um, or I can ground tent, or I can pull a trailer. So I just wanted more options that I couldn't have with the Defender that I do have with this Bronco. Um, closing that off. Oh, well, let's talk a little bit about the propane tank on the back there, Barry, and the back wheel. Um, well, what I did here, well, you see, I took the rock slides, which everyone has. Um, I just added the propane tank on there, and then I, instead of, with here, I just added extra fuel. Everyone knows the Broncos <laughs> gas range isn't all the best, so if I ever do get out super long, I just, I just added this and added in it that because I have other water systems for water. Right. As well as the water here. To show you on the inside, as far as the um, the actual Red Arc system, I have it actually built in the Goose Gear setup here. So actually, I just take this out, which is my actual air compressor hoses. This is just my extra tool bag, and then you can actually see on the inside to where I have everything set up. Yeah, you got the inverter, and thousand watt inverter. Man, Red Arc does such an amazing system. Yeah, they kill it. <laughs> They're good. And who installed this for you, Barry? So I had Rhino Adventure, Rhino Adventure up in Northern California. Um, they they did all this. I drove down to Southern California for Goose Gear for Brian. And um, I also have my air compressor, my dual ARB air compressor. 
which is right there, mounted to the back of the, the goose gear. gear. Yeah. yeah. Only because the only reason why I did that is because they don't have a mount system for the Raptor yet mm. in their engine bay. They there's not a um, mount for that to put, and I don't know much about it and how much room I would need. So right. this was just the most logical. And if there does one or someone out there already knows how to do it, please let me know. Then I can move it in the front. Only because my, yeah, my hose is long enough to go everywhere, but I do have to throw it underneath my rig to get it to the other side. Right. I'd like to put it up in the front. So I, cause I got the four hose connections and I can, yeah, I right. can air up and air down rapidly, but, um, I air up and down pretty quick now, so it's not really, has never been a big burden. Um, also, I also forgot to say that I also have shore power. So I actually put shore power here, tied it into oh, yeah. my bumper here. So anytime that I'm backed into my garage or whatever, I can just have extension cord and I got shore power that charges my batteries, but I charge both my batteries because I have an adapter in in the engine bay where it, it will talk to both batteries and charge charge right. both batteries. At the same time. And you don't have them here, uh, right here, but you use the solar panels, the Jackery panels, the exterior yeah, ones. Yeah. So I I figured out a system for if anyone wants to know how to do it, so you don't have to go buy these super expensive uh, solar panels. I have, I have a Jackery 1500 that I always travel with, always. And so what I did, well, Rhino Adventures did, and Mike. Mike helped me on um, Amazon to get all the connections, and then I just had them extend the cord. So what I did here is that female to male connections. So here's my solar connection that will tie in here. Oh, yeah. So I have it to where it just connects in and snaps in. Yep. Bam, no problem. I'm not going to snap it in here. And then I took the Jackery, the, the, the Jackery solar panel, which I have right here. I mean, I could take it out and show you. Right. And then their connection, and then I feed the two connections together. And I have four panels, four, 400 watts of panel, well, 100 watt panels, four of them. Yeah. And I, I only use two. Yeah. And it also, so now I'm using the solar that way. And then all I did was just connect it, connect yep. the two right here. And we do have an adapter that goes to the solar panel from here. Yes. So just, and, yeah. so and just. You have that adapter too. Yeah. Yeah. And then it just connects in and put it to the sun and it works perfectly. So if you're looking to do it, if yeah. you have a Jackery and you're looking to do it and not have to buy a solar, a solar panel, then do that. But I do have ideas for this Bronco solar on the roof, if anyone is interested <laughs> uh, in helping me figuring out how to do that. Yeah, so more to come on that. Mm -hmm. More to come on that uh, subject, right? Yeah, there'll be more to come because I've checked out, Mike, and it's really funny because I've looked at all of these racks. And you see within these racks, you have slots. Yes. And no one ever really actually uses their entire roof rack unless you're going to put a big um, rooftop tent. If you use a smaller one, it's cool. So up front here, I'm thinking about this idea. I'm just wondering what, if anyone who could think about doing it, I thought of it first, please give me a percentage. Um, I'm going to build it anyway. So up here, you have the slots here. And you have the slots here, your T-slots, right? Yep. Front and side, on top and the sides. So yep. I'm thinking, that I can build or I can make a board and they have the super thin solar panels, right? Yeah. Put my Anderson cord here, tack it to the board, slide it in through these slots because you have slots here that fit. Can get a 100 amp panel up here at all times if I'm not using this board or even right through here, um, right here that has an and run the Anderson cord wire through you have solar all the time on your roof, just like you'd have on a, on your tent or anything else. Yeah. And I have an extra connection on the back, right? So all I do is take the solar panel off, unconnect it, 
take it to the back and then just connect it to the very back and I get, don't have to worry about bringing out my jackeries. I can just have solar panel right through these T-slots, put it on here, connect it to the Anderson, and, it's, and then just unconnect it, pop it off, and then just lay it on the ground. Yeah, so that's, you. that's my next little project that I'm thinking about. Uh, yeah. But other than that, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I put a GMRS radio. I think people want to, everyone's always wondering, like, how do you put... A radio in so what i did here can you see that mm -hmm. i'll come in there. okay so you can see where my radio is right yep okay so what i did i had adam my buddy from step 22 so what i did here was that i stuck this here i still have to figure out what to do with the mic but this doesn't bother me i'm just going to set it right there but i had a plate built to where i can actually snap this here and I can take this entire radio out or I can pop it oops I actually hit the power on or I can just snap it back in because I have a I guess it's a called a ocean Wuxin, mm -hmm. Wuxin radio so you have to the face plate and then I have the brain here and so I stuck it here uh, 3m taped the plate to it sat it right there drilled holes and then slap it right through and it just snaps right in. So I can take the space, place, base plate off at any time I want to, even though the cord's right there. But you can see right there, I just have it booby trapped there. I just pop it in those little holes and then snap it back in and it's in. Yeah, that's very cool. Be able to so take I can that out. always remove that or untake yeah. it out if I want it out of my Yeah, head. the cord just snaps out. So yeah. Uh, yeah, and then from there, from my... Uh, GMRS radio. I also have Switch Pro up here, so I can control all my lights, and I can do it off off my phone. So I put the Switch Pro switch up here. Um, and your Garmin GPS, that. and you've got your 67 design. 67 design is straight there. I do forgive me. I do have to get new <laughs> USB connections. I just threw those in right away. They're white. I'm gonna short get the short black ones, but that's just how I have it booby trapped right now. Um, but yeah, 67 design. I forgot about that one. I got that one and that's it. Yeah, you got Everything the GoPro. Is... All right. Anything else you think you want to mention about it? No, I, I, like I say, I'm a novice at this thing. So I've just gone with, I, I, I do have to thank my defender because I went through a lot of trials with that one to be able to get this exactly the way I wanted it. I have to admit, I don't see anything I want more than that wench, but I, I like it built in. I want it to really flow well with the rig. I understand, but I think, you know, over time, I think with patience, somebody's going to. Yeah. Out with it. All right. Very cool. All right. All right, guys. Well, that's a wrap. Barry, thanks so much, man, oh, for it, buddy. doing the walk around with me. Um, yeah, this is an incredible Bronco. I, I've haven't seen one quite like it, especially a Raptor. Um, it's uh, set to go. And where are we going this year? We're going everywhere. Death Valley, yeah, Bobby, right. Colorado. Yeah. You know, all right. Everywhere. Yeah, and we have, uh, we have some people, I think, that probably want to tag along with us, too, right. on this trip. So, Bring but, a lot of water, because I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we got the Guzzle H2O. We got the Guzzle H2O. Yeah. That helps. Um, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, Barry, thanks for that. And... Uh, Stay tuned. Uh, I'll have another video coming out again shortly. Thank you.